welcome back to my channel and welcome to another video. I literally just finished my last reading vlog, which was reading Akatar, so check that out if you haven't already. And in that, I apologise for the general state of me, but in case you missed that, I apologise. I am off work sick today because unfortunately the chronic condition I have is flaring, so this eye is a bit swollen, but I'm deliberately sat with like the light shining this side and not this side to try and hide it, but my hair is a mess and stuff. But I want to film this because I think I'm going to be spending the rest of the day reading because I have nothing else to do because I just need to be resting. So this reading vlog is going to be my first reading vlog of reading ARCs. So ARCs are advanced reader copies and this is where you get hold of a book before it comes out with the agreement being that you will write a review for that book. And I have never had ARC books before. Um, you know, I'm not, I've, my reading channel was obviously very small. Now that it's on my planning channel, I think in some ways it does actually help with kind of, I have more followers here and I can talk about my Instagram a bit more. So people are maybe more likely to invest in wanting me to have arcs, but I have never been given an arc before. But I joined NetGalley, which if you haven't heard of it, is a website where you can basically request arcs of books that are listed on there from various different publishers. And if they decide to give it to you, they will send you a free digital copy of it. So there are also audiobooks on there as well. And you then basically are given the book with the agreement being that you will write a review. And if you don't, um, your like net galley score goes down, so you're less likely to be sent them in the future. So I hadn't ever really thought I could join NetGalley. I don't really know why. I think I maybe thought it was US only, but given it's digital copies, I'm not sure why I ever thought that. But I'd actually been approached by a company previously about um, helping them with ARCs. And then that company, uh, having reached out to me, then felt that my reviews were not appropriate for them and asked me to change my reviews. And I was like, yeah, that's not going to happen. But I have limited time to read and I don't read for money and I wouldn't be for that website either. So I was like, no, people will have to approve me if they like the way I review and if they don't, well, that's fine. So yeah, it kind of burned me a bit with this other website, but I finally joined NetGalley about a week ago and I requested a few books and kind of thought, you know, I have no score on NetGalley, why would I get approved for them? And what I didn't realise is that my reading email, for whatever reason, was no longer on my Gmail app, so I didn't get notified when I got approved for the books. And so I like randomly logged in the other day just to see, I was like, oh no, like I didn't get approved for anything, let's see if there's anything else I could request. And I got approved for two books, which is actually really exciting because... I'm, I'm never going to use this to like try and read like everything because I, you know, I'm aiming for a hundred book this year. I think I'm going to hit it, but you know, I still only have limited time to read. So I don't want to just read stuff for the sake of reading. You know, I want to read stuff I'll love, but there are books that I would really like to read on there. And it's obviously really exciting to like be given an arc for that and to try and like help support the authors through reading the copy in advance of the publication date to then generate a bit of buzz about it or add a review for it to hopefully help that author get their book out there more. So yeah, I got a proof of two. So I'm going to do this reading vlog of me reading the first arcs that I've been given. So I have actually already started my first one because this book is published on the 31st of July and it is the 17th when I'm filming this. So the first book that I'm going to be reading is Was It Good For You by Catherine Freeman. This wasn't actually a book that I'd heard of before, but I was going through the romance category because that's the genre that I read the most. And when I read the biography for this book, I was like, that's very much my kind of thing. And the cover like is, I'm just obsessed with this. I love it so much. So yeah, I thought this is really my kind of thing. So I have read like the first 20 pages or so. So let me give you an idea of what this one is about. And then I will carry on reading and let you know what I think of the rest of it. So this is about Sophie, who is really, really into spreadsheets. And she has this like one big spreadsheet that manages her whole life. It has a tab for everything. So it has like a tab for work. It has a tab for like gifts she buys people or gets given. It has a tab for like her finances and a tab for her workout schedule. And then it has a tab for her love life. And she, uh, following a kind of disastrous breakup, is rating each of her now, the rating each of the dates that she's going on now out of 10 based on like different categories and so they get an overall score and if they're then not above the line she then isn't going to keep dating them because basically she feels like she's been burned so many times that she needs to like hand it over to an algorithm to figure out 
whether she should be dating this person or not. This is such an interesting concept. Um, and so the point that I've got to is she's been set up on a date by her Zumba instructor with a doctor called Michael. And Michael has literally just like saved somebody's life before arriving for the date. So when he gets there, I think this is a grumpy sunshine as well. So he's naturally very quiet and kind of reserved anyway, but he doesn't say to her because he doesn't really even have time to be honest. He doesn't say to her that he's literally been like, just kind of saved someone's life. And I don't even know that she knows he's a doctor at this point. Um, so he's like really, he's just exhausted and he's not getting across any kind of personality. But his, there, he's there for about two seconds on this date. He like goes and gets some wine, comes back, his phone rings and he says to Sophie, I'm gonna have to take it. Goes outside to take the call. And obviously she just assumes he's completely disinterested, basically downs this bottle of wine on her own. Michael is taking a phone call that confirms that the life that he saved, which is like his neighbor's husband, is he, he's doing okay. And so he's feeling a lot better. So then he's like, right, well, I, you know, Sophie's super attractive. I would like to still go on this date with her. She seems really bubbly. Jade, the Zumba instructor, uh, really likes her. So I will push forward and like try and save this date. He goes back in, as I say, Sophie's drunk most of this bottle of wine. She's like, cool, this date's going terribly. And Michael's kind of so taken aback. He doesn't get any point across. He doesn't stop her, nothing. And it's just like, uh, okay. So the date ends and he, and Sophie is quite forceful in this as well. So to be honest, if I was Michael, I don't think I, I I'm clearly, I'm going to be a Michael. Like I wouldn't have known how to be like, oh, this situation has just spiraled so quickly. So the next day, Sophie is, she hasn't been able to like catch up with her roommates who they're all very close to talk about how the, um, how the date went, but she did straight away, like put in the scores to her spreadsheet. So she just shares the spreadsheet with her friend, Ava being like, look, you can see for yourself how it went, but she's rushing to get into an appointment for work. So it's two hours when she's done with the appointment that she gets out and Ava is like, you need to call me, you need to call me. And instead of selecting Ava, she has selected like all, and the spreadsheet has been sent to like everyone in her contact list or everyone in this group. Apologies for that building work. There is always work happening around where I live. Every time I film, there is work happening. So rather than selecting Ava, she actually has selected all and it's this group of people. I think it's like all her contacts or people that she's put into it anyway, because apparently she was trying to... She's made this group of contacts, which has loads of her contacts in. Apparently she was trying to raise money for charity. So she was like sending out the message to loads of people. And that then goes to everyone. So like her parents see it, and remember this has like scores of her sex life on it. It goes to her boss where her boss can then see that she's been going to get appointments during her work schedule. And yeah, obviously like major issues happening here. And then Michael has seen it. And so he's seen that he scored really badly. So like, that's the literal point I've gotten to where Michael has seen the spreadsheet and is obviously very upset about it. I am interested to see where the story goes from here. I'm assuming she's then gonna date him again because uh, maybe the spreadsheet has proved wrong or something like that. So I'm very interested to see what happens from here. I do think the kind of all thing is a little bit random. Like, is that a thing that can actually happen really on phones these days that like messages can be sent to everyone? But I guess it can, I guess if she's made like a group chat or something like that. But also I'm not really sure why you would add the people that you are dating into this kind of list. Like are you that, I would never, if I was raising money for charity, add in people I was randomly dating to get them to share money with me. So that's maybe the only reservation that I have so far about kind of how this has happened. But yeah, I am enjoying it so far. I'm interested to see where it goes from here. So I'll check in with you when I've read a bit more. Okay, so I'm now on page 123. So I thought I would do a check in while I make myself a sandwich. We've got such a limited amount of cheese right now. I'm so sad we've got to get some. Okay, so my last update was probably a bit chaotic because of the noise outside. So I'm not even sure how effectively I would have explained the story. But where I left off was that Michael had just found out about Sophie's spreadsheet. And what kind of then happens from there is that Sophie feels really bad. She really owns apologising to people generally about the spreadsheet and she ends up calling Michael to apologise and sort of very specifically wants to like take him out again to apologise. He agrees and then while they're on this meetup, basically they agree, My, you know, Michael is 
very against the spreadsheet as I think if you've scored a 2.5 out of 10 you would be he's really against the spreadsheet and he's kind of saying to Sophie like it's it's basically rubbish like how can you define you know whether you're compatible with someone in this spreadsheet and they decide like this is all the cheese we have how am I going to make this into a sandwich they agree that they will continue to see each other to basically rate their future dates and see if Michael can effectively up his score. Michael agrees to this because ultimately he fancies Sophie. She's very attractive and a really like exciting personality, very different to Michael, but he's clearly very attracted to it. And Sophie is obviously very defensive of her spreadsheet. So they agree to do 10 more dates. And in part, I think this is because they are attracted to each other. Like even if Sophie doesn't admit it, she is attracted to Michael. And so I think there's like a small part of her that that's kind of why they agree to each other. So the story as we are at with a hundred pages in is basically them going on their dates. And I'm really enjoying it. Um, I think that Michael is my kind of man. Um, so for those of you that don't know, in case anybody new watches this video, I'm engaged to a kind of cinema role guy. Not that Michael is a cinema role, but my partner Stuart is very, uh, he is quiet. I mean, so am I, but uh, I, in some ways I'm quieter than him and in some ways he's quieter than me. Um, but in general, I think he's probably quieter than me. And you know he's quite like reserved and I would say that you probably have to get to know him like I don't think he's necessarily somebody who dating in particular is like the best way to get to know him it's better to get to know him like in other ways and then you'll realize how busy he is obviously because I'm marrying him and what I think is so interesting about this is like Michael is it's very similar with Michael in that you know, he's someone that like dating is kind of hard for him, particularly given that Sophie's idea of a good time is like going out and partying. And obviously that is not Michael's idea of a good time, but they do have like some dates where Michael gets to do that. And he does really enjoy spending that kind of time with Sophie. And Sophie is starting to enjoy that. So Sophie like lives in London. It's like, you know, super like party lifestyle. And Michael lives in like a really quiet village. And so, you know, they're both starting to enjoy each other's lives a little bit more. So, yeah, I'm very interested to see where the story goes from here, though, because can these two people be compatible? Like, I don't see Michael giving up his life in the village because he lives with his gran, who he's like taking care of. He's the village doctor, like he can't leave the village, right? So is Sophie gonna give up her London life? I'm assuming so. But yeah, so I'm very interested to see where that goes. Um, my only criticism really is that there is, in that way, it's a contemporary romance criticism rather than a criticism of this particular story, to be honest, that a lot of the focus is on um, she's not like short but a lot of it is on her being slim and toned and very like traditionally aesthetically attractive and I just like I understand there are a lot of attractive people in the world but for those of us that are maybe not traditionally attractive um, I like to read a bit more variation in my romance novels and it's quite difficult to come by is I guess all I'm saying um so yeah that's a bit of a shame and I would say like a lot of this is focused on looks like particularly as one of the scores that Michael receives from Sophie is about how attractive he is and ultimately one thing I do find really interesting is that she's talking about like how his attraction like how her attraction for him rises so like he gets more attractive the more she knows him and that I really like because I actually think that is very real to real life so I really like that aspect of it but there is still a lot of it that is a focus on physical attraction I think particularly the way that Michael speaks about Sophie a lot of that is about physical attraction and obviously you have to be physically attracted to somebody but I still feel like it's quite a big part of it and it would maybe be nice if it was like ever so slightly more skewed towards personality but I am really enjoying it and we're getting to the point now where they're starting to really develop feelings for each other we're at like date four, uh, date five. So I'm really interested to see where it happens from here. I'm definitely starting to get those like feelings. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go read some more because I really want to see what happens next. <laughs> um, hi, 
it's now Thursday. I actually finished this book several days ago, but I think I finished it. Yeah, I finished it like right before I went to sleep on Monday night, possibly. And then I've just been like not very well and finishing up work and stuff. So it was maybe Tuesday night actually. So maybe, maybe it's only been a couple of days, but anyway, I finished um, Was It Good For You by Catherine Freeman and I gave it four stars. I really enjoyed it, you know? So obviously I don't want to spoil the plot or anything, but and I don't remember what I have already told you <laughs> through the nature of spending a couple of days away from this vlog, but I really like the way that the story went. So there's always third act drama in a romance and it's my least favourite part of romances is third act drama because there will just be an unnecessary reason why the characters break up and then they get back together and then you're supposed to expect that this relationship will just last forever. And in this one, I felt like the third act drama actually kind of made sense because you know, ultimately these were two people who were fundamentally probably not meant to be together or or maybe are like so different on the surface. So I thought that was actually handled really well. I do think it came a little bit out of nowhere. Um, <laughs> so, you know, there is like a, the, the character that decides that they don't think it's going to work anymore. I was like, that's, re that's a real turn from the day before. So that was like a downside, but that's again, very normal with um, these kinds of romances. And yeah, I just like, we finally got to the steamy parts in the later part of the book. It takes a long time to get there, which is interesting because so much of the book feels like it's leading that way. And then to be honest, the steamy scenes are very short. There's only two of them. And I think I would only really count one of them as like a proper steamy scene. So, you know, I like steam in books. So that was like, I guess a little bit of a downside that I would have liked a bit more. And I just felt like we were working up to it for such a long time that I would have thought it would have formed more part of it. But I really liked where like the plot in general went. I felt like it just made sense. I actually really liked watching Sophie like falling in love with Michael's world and the people in it. And I felt the characters were all really rich. Like there's a lot of characters that Michael has in his world, like his grandma, the person that she is potentially going to date, his brother, his brother-in-law, no, his his brother, his sister-in-law, um, his niece, like there's this whole rich cast of characters. And I felt like despite being side characters, they were actually really fleshed out well as well. So yeah, I really enjoyed this. The only reason I didn't rate it higher than four stars was because there are multiple mentions to being slim toned. And like, it will say things like, um, you know, Michael could feel how toned Sophie was under his touch. It's like that kind of thing. And as a curvy person, I am just not massively interested in reading that kind of thing. And it, I understand that many people are slim and toned and that's fine, but it's like the default in romance that both usually, at least one of the characters are super slim and super toned. And like, this book was actually not about looks because Sophie, whilst she is attracted to Michael, scores him quite low on that when she initially is scoring him on the spreadsheet. And then over the course of time, she, um, you know, realises that actually it's a lot of it is like his personality that's what's more attractive to her. And that is so interesting in a book. I love that. What I then don't necessarily need is the addition of like, but also he actually is attractive um, on, on like a physical level. Um, and yeah, obviously you have to be physically attracted to somebody, but it it kind of, I don't know, I just felt like the, the message that the author was trying to make was almost undercut a little bit by the like constant references to being slim and toned and stuff. So I just didn't feel that I could rate it higher because of that, but I did very much enjoy it. So it's being published on the 31st of July. So if you enjoy a romance, I think it is well worth you having a look to see if this one would be something you would enjoy. I think a lot of people would get a lot out of it. So I would recommend it. I really enjoyed it and hopefully you will as well. So that is my first book done. So it's now, as I say, Thursday, and I have finished work for term. I hope everyone applauded. I'm so excited to get, like, I've got just under two weeks off and it's unbelievably needed, <laughs> unbelievably needed. So I've done quite a lot of filming this morning and editing and various things. So that I'm calling, I'm drawing a line now, like I have to relax now. So I'm going to carry on this vlog and I'm going to read the other arc that I have, which is The Boyfriend Candidate by Ashley Winstead. It says that this book is being published on the 3rd of August, but Goodreads said it was published on May 9th. So I wonder if 3rd of August is the UK publishing date maybe, and it's already been released 
in the US or something like that. But I'm so excited to have been approved for the arc of this because this was already on my TBR. So that's obviously even better if you get approved for a book that is like one you actually want to read rather than just growing your never ending TBR. So this book from what I've read of the summary is about Alexis and Logan and Alexis is a librarian she's very quiet and she gets dumped for being too boring in bed so she decides that the way to overcome this is to have a one night stand and be you know super adventurous and she's gonna have a one night stand with a guy she meets in a bar called Logan but there ends up being a fire alarm or a fire or something that happens in the hotel and so Logan ends up carrying Alexis out and loads of um, paparazzi and newspapers and stuff take photos of them. And it turns out that Logan is a politician and he is running to uh, become like the next mayor or governor or something, governor of Texas. And uh, so he, it's obviously really bad for his image if he's caught having a one night stand with somebody. So he asks her if she will fake date him for two months until he the election is over basically so we have some fake dating which is one of my favorite tropes i think probably my favorite is best friends to lovers but i am very excited to read another fake dating romance and i feel like this one it almost it has a little bit of like heart principle vibes so heart principle by helen huang is about anna who is kind of known to be like really boring she has this really boring sex life with her um, boyfriend who breaks up with her in part because of this and so she goes out to get a one night stand um, and it's it's a whole it's not actually really about that <laughs> it's actually really super depressing um, but that's like the initial premise of the story and so I'm excited to sort of have a book that is gonna look at that but then is also gonna go fake dating and is gonna be a more traditional romance I mean I love Tart Principle don't get me wrong five stars but um, I'm excited for like a bit more of like a lighter romance which I think this one is gonna be so I will check in with you when I have read a bit more of this book. Hi, so I didn't check in again. I just read the whole thing. I loved it. I loved this. So let me <laughs> let me talk to you a little bit more about the story and then we can go into my thoughts. I'm not really sure there is much else to say. It's what you would then expect from a fake dating romance in many ways of it's then about Logan and Alexis trying to figure out you know do they actually have real feelings for each other especially bearing in mind that these were two people that like were going to have a one night stand so clearly they're attracted to each other and so they obviously there's tension there so they're trying to navigate that basically the whole time but the story takes some turns that I, I'm not saying that I like didn't see coming but that I thought were really well written and you know I've already spoken in this video about how I don't like uh, third act drama. And I didn't feel like this book had that because again, I just felt it was like justified drama, which really is like the highest compliment I can give a romance when it doesn't like shoehorn in some random drama. I thought this was so well written and it had like one thing that I don't love in that there is a bit of a love triangle in here. And I don't, love love triangles especially when Logan is he's very brash and he's very loud and he swears a lot but he is very much not like a bad guy I don't enjoy reading romances about bad guys like um I guess I think if you like the hating game you might like this but this is like infinitely better than the hating game in my opinion because I don't love the hating game but I guess I can see where maybe Logan and Josh have some similarities but Logan is so much more consistently a good guy uh he just is somebody who knows his own mind and isn't afraid to say it and as a person who's really similar to Alexis who is really shy and really struggles to speak up and say when I don't like things or I'm not happy with things I am also in awe of people like that in the way that Alexis is in awe of Logan so I really like that and Logan just is consistently a really 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 good guy so you are rooting 
waiting for Alexis and Logan to be together. And so when the love triangle comes in, it's like, I don't, I don't really need this part of the story. And the worry that I had is that the other guy, Will, was going to be portrayed as like being boring compared to Logan. And I don't think that that was the case. I think it was ultimately Alexis she does want like more spice in her life and that is clear but you can tell that she really likes Will um and she kind of says like in a different life you know I think that like this could be a thing I guess this is potentially spoilers but like we all know what you're hoping for from the ending um and I just thought that that was like handled really well so yeah I really I I was so worried because Will is the kind of guy I would settle down with. Like I'm settling down with a Will, you know, that's who I'm marrying. I'm not marrying a Logan, but you can understand why Alexis falls for Logan. And there is, it does suffer from the lack of communication trope where if the two of them just spoke to each other, they would get past these things. But I almost think in fake dating, you can forgive it because it has the offset of, we're not communicating because we've both agreed the rules from the beginning. We're not going to deviate from the rules. And I think you are reluctant to speak your feelings because you don't know that that other person has changed their mind. So I, yeah, I liked that part. I think it was all like clarified well. So to be honest, I think I'm going to give this five stars, <laughs> um, which is I really don't give five stars lightly at all. I'm so stingy with my fives. And I think it's like a 4.75 five. Um, and it really has once again made me reflect that like, I gave the love hypothesis 4.75 back when I read it and it's such a five star read for me like I think about it all the time and it was just because I didn't like the whole tall small thing and we got none of that I don't know anything about what weight Alexis was and I loved that um I know a lot about the weight of uh the weight of what's his name uh Logan you can tell I've been reading all day the uh yeah we know a lot about the weight of Logan and the fact he's like really ripped and he works out even though he I don't know how he would have time to work out given that he's a politician and he we we don't get any steam until very near the end <laughs> just to warn you like it's often leaning steamy but is not particularly steamy and so we did get quite a typical steamy scene like in my opinion nobody writes a steam scene like Ali Hazelwood like this was quite a sort of dreamlike uh, steamy steam but yeah anyway I only gave love hypothesis 4.75 because the whole olive being so small really annoyed me but like really I need to up that to a five star and I feel like well with this one I felt it was so well written I felt the story was so interesting I was like really invested in Logan winning the race that he was in and uh, winning the, the political race and you really felt obviously I'm British but I watch a lot of planner people who are in Texas so I know a lot about Texas politics from them and so seeing how Logan was trying to fight for a a, a more like left-wing green result in Texas knowing how Texas vote like really did ring true for me I felt like I could really like get behind that so I just felt the story was so interesting I don't think it's like one of my like top tier five stars like I almost need like a six tier uh six star category which is reserved for like my absolute top tiers so like heartstopper and stuff um but I feel like this is a five star read and if it isn't I need to probably reevaluate all of my reads do you know what I mean and it would be like a really high four so yeah I would say it's like a 4.755 so I'm gonna rate it five because I think loads of people will love this I think it's really good I really recommend that you read it so I think it's already out in the US but it comes out in the UK I believe on the 3rd of August but let me just double check that yeah 3rd of August so if you want to pick this up um yeah I think if you like the hating game you will like this but I don't like the hating game and I love this uh, <laughs> I also think actually if you are a fan of red white and royal blue you might like this and that is my dinner so I need to wrap this vlog up let me take you with me while I go turn off my alarm just realized you won't be able to hear me with the microwave on so yes uh i will wrap up this vlog here but i really enjoyed this i loved having the opportunity to read books that haven't been published in the uk yet so that i can talk about them is just a really really cool thing so a massive thank you to net galley and the publishers for giving me advanced copy of reading these and hopefully i will be able to i've got another book that i've been approved for which i think doesn't come out till august so 
say. But I might do another one of these if you like them because I just, I don't know, I just really enjoyed the experience. So yeah, if you want to see more of these, then make sure that you give me a like. Uh, any comments down below are also always massively appreciated. Let me know if you think you'll be picking up these books or any arcs or any books that you have been enjoying recently. I would love to hear from you. Otherwise, uh, I will also have links in the description to my Instagram and my Goodreads. So if you want to check out any of my other book reviews on my Goodreads, then obviously that is the best place to find out what I am reading at the time and what I review something instantly because I'm very good at doing my reviews as soon as I finish a book. Otherwise, I'll see you in my next video. Bye!